The plight of the school came to the fore on inspection tour to familiarize himself with the challenges facing the school ahead of the commencement of a work by Ekin Takiteku to the second education committee. The committee is headed by former education minister Ekos Pio Gabra. How many students? We have been asked by the Education Committee has been mandated to work hard to give education a facelift in the Gandangwe state. Their first assignment was to rehabilitate the Manchetakita Yuan No. 3 school at Adabraka. Since its establishment in 1947, the school has not seen any major rehabilitation. Some of us went to school here 50, 60 years ago, right? So we are here to see what we can do to help the school in general. So we are happy that we are all healthy today. We have attended a class. We are hoping that you will take your studies very seriously so that one day you can also become worthy citizens of our fatherland and our motherland. This is a former minister of state. If you want to know her name, she will tell you. Others are senior officials of different organizations, including your teachers. Many others didn't come today, but we are happy to be here to see the problems of your school, many problems, and see what we can do to make your lives better and the school system also more enjoyable for you. Alright? That's why we are here. A new classroom block constructed during the elsewhere John Mohammed's regime is yet to be handed over to the school. And even as they are here, they don't come around. So the police around, they want to come around to And this structure has now become a safe haven for criminals, including mobile phone snatchers who squat in the structure. These drug addicts eat, sleep, bath, and ease themselves on the compound, even as teaching and learning go on. The Adabraka Manche, Nietetel Ajabing, who could not believe his eyes, described the state of the place as sorrowful. He called for attention to salvage the Gandangwe language. Mm 
Education Committee and former Minister for Gender, Children, Social Protection, Utiko Efisa Jaba, described the situation as dangerous for teaching and learning. The squatters do not only sleep in the almost completed facility temporarily, but some have moved in with their entire belongings and live there with their children. This woman was found comfortably sleeping in a mosquito net as if it was her home. <laughs> And she said, I was with the not I and I'm say, oh, you're one. How many months? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Three weeks. Three weeks. One year. One year. One year. Yes. Look, this guy, we have sent this guy several times. The police have come around to sack him several times. He leaves and he comes by this particular guy. That's what he does. Let's let's look at come and see the phones here. What and the phones are they your <laughs> Somebody's 
And look at phones over here. There are a lot of. And this guy claims he's a phone repairer. A phone repairer, and you are sleeping at this time. On behalf of my director, I would like to say a very big thank you to the gunman chair for the initiative of trying to renovate the place and to see to it that teaching and learning is done effectively in Ajabin, specifically Manche, Taki, Manen. I would also like to thank our chairman, Honorable Skiogadwa. In fact, I'm really impressed with the work you are doing since you were commissioned as a committee to see to the renovation. You have done so much work and the various things you are doing on behalf of my director once again, my head teachers and my teachers, the teachers and the learners, we say we are grateful. Honorable Otiko Daba and all committee members, we say we are thank, very grateful to you and we thank you very much. It is our prayer that the plans that you have for this school, the Lord will give you the strength to continue with it so that we see it to a successful end of this program. And we will be very grateful and thank you at the end of the day. May God bless us all. Leader of the committee, Ecos Pio Gabra, pledged the committee's resolve to help salvage the situation. Things, and there are many schools, including this particular class, the government chief, me, who appointed us a few months ago to undertake a review of the current situation in the school and to propose represent improvements and to mobilize public opinion and private and public support for fundraising to address some of the challenges of this school. We have to thank him for his initiative and for bringing us together to focus on one aspect of our national endeavor, which is the quality of education. But the quality of education itself is a complex subject because it, in, it includes the quality of the family and it includes the provisions that traditional authorities also have for improving their own neighborhoods and communities. It includes what the private sector can do to improve the areas in which they operate. And so, uh, Adam Raka Chief here has mentioned a number of corporate institutions who, which line up the avenue, one of the most famous avenues, if not the most famous avenue in Ghana, which is Kwame Nkrumah Avenue, named after our founding father. So if in a school, name the avenue in front of which is named after our founding father, and the school itself is named after the chief of the community, that's the Ghana community in which we all live, and the school happens to be so deteriorated, then we have to collectively come together to save the school. And I sit here only, not only because I may or I was a Minister of Education at some point in time, many years ago, but I actually was a student or maybe we call it a pupil in this school at the time when I was six, seven years of age. So and we are told um, reportedly that His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, also schooled here at one point in his own education. So when there are many possible alumni of significance such as the ones I've mentioned 
and such a school in a ceremonial avenue. When the Queen of England came to visit Ghana in the 1960s, she came along the school, along this route. And in fact, most of this, of the heads of state that have visited Ghana ceremonially, this is the route that they use. So for independence, parades, and all, all kinds of other things over the years, this route has often been used for all those ceremonies. The school therefore needs urgent attention. And so we have to call on the relevant government agencies, beginning with the Ministry of Education, the Ghana Education Service, which has a Ghana Education Trust Fund that I happen to have had the privilege of creating from scratch. And so if there's a Ghana Education Trust Fund, there's a Ghana Students Loan Scheme and all kinds of other institutions, Social Security and National Insurance Trust, Ghana Scholarship Secretariat, which have all been established to improve the Ghanaian educational system. Association of African Universities, which is based in Accra, Ghana. There's no reason why anybody should see a video, which I'm sure, unfortunately, will be shown tonight and many nights to come, that this is a school in the Republic of today's Ghana, in the capital city of Accra only a mile or two from the parliament house, a few kilometers from the presidential offices. This does not speak well of our beloved country. And so rather than criticize, which may, some may do, let us be positive-minded. Let us think through strategies of how collectively we can improve or rebuild the school. Many private churches, private churches, have shown us what can be done. When people come together, they pay tithes, they pay offerings, they make correct, collect, pay collections. Our market women know how to collect money for their susu businesses to improve their commercial enterprises. The banks do the same, collecting money from all of us. They declare huge profits at the end of every year. So it is not beyond us to just save at least one significant school. And if we can do that, then we can save more schools. So this is a, a movement which has begun by the Ga Manchet, and which we are privileged to be supporting to save our schools. Save our schools. So we can save our forests, but we should also save our schools. Because the forests may breathe in their own way, but the schools actually bring up our future leaders. And so it is very, very critical that even while we indulge in other projects, we prioritize our school system and especially our primary school system. If the person misses the key aspects of their education, nothing you can teach them in a university will make up for what they've lost easily in the first few years of their lives. Any child in education, everybody knows how important it is. So without saying too much, I want to appeal. We are beginning the appeal here today in Adamraka, Matitaki schools, to all and sundry businessmen and women. We hear of people dying and leaving huge amounts of assets for their families. That is fine. We need people who are willing to bequeath some of those assets to the school system those who are privileged to be hosting very lavish weddings, funerals, birthdays, that is fine. Think about the next generation and contribute to the government's mission for renewing our schools. Thank you very much.